I'm Mark St. John, you're watching Rock and Roll All Night. Yep. Mostly just going through arrangements, different arrangements, different keys of the song. You know, trying to find out what the best song for someone to sing in or, or what sat right in the groove. How about the tour? The tour. Tunes for the tour. Um, they picked out the songs. They picked out the songs. Did you jam all the songs with them? Um, I never rehearsed with them for a tour. I just played a couple of times and I just went up in front of the audience and just played with them. I never rehearsed with them. We did, yeah. Thank you. How's your hand doing now? Oh, it's fine. Thank you. Um, when I had arthritis with writer syndrome, they said um, I'd never play again, but uh, I can still play flat. I don't do backwards. You know, it's all good. And how long was it spent with kids totally? Um, almost a year, I think. Yeah, it's been about 14 years. Like a long time. Ago. Hey, you Mark? Hi, how you doing? Good, thanks. Uh, All right. I was watching, in watching Kids Extreme Close Up, you know, a million times on video, I've always noticed when the subject comes up of you and Gene, like, well, you know, it, it, it's, it, it was really one of like, well, you play with, you don't play with your head, you play with your dick, you know? Did you, did you take any umbrage to what Gene said about you on the video? Well, actually, Gene was the one that got me in the band. Um, Paul had a problem with it, uh, and I've never heard him say anything derogative until, like, a couple of these things here. I think, um, you get sick of listening to people say, uh, Mark, Mark, and so you kind of, like, kind of put a stop to it. So I, I don't think it's, it's meant to be mean or anything. It's just showbiz. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Hi. How you doing, Mark? I'm Uh, what did that happen to that project you were working on with Dave versus Keith? Why didn't that ever get off the ground? Um, well, Peter was going through a divorce at the time, and uh, he was staying over at my house and all that, but um, we did a demo with about 12 songs, and um, let's see, we sent it to a bunch of record companies, and at the time the record company said, we like what you're doing, but we're not interested at the time, so I actually quit the band, because we did it for about a year, I wasn't making any money, so I told Peter, I can't do this anymore. He took it really wrong, though, he took it like, yeah, I, I fucked him up or something, but he was actually living at my house, and uh, he went on from that, you know, he went on and did other things, I did other things, you know, it's a long time not making any money. Yeah? Uh, what did you do before KISS? Was KISS the main break, breakthrough for you? Well, I was doing seminars at NAMM shows with different guitar companies, and doing a lot of teaching. Thank you. No problem. Ask away. How you doing? Not too bad, Mark. Um, how was, how was it like working, uh, filming the video for Heaven's on Fire? What was that like? Um, actually I was in the hospital and um, they wanted me to come out to New York but um, they came out here and they sent a limo to the hospital and I, I wasn't supposed to be out the doctor didn't want me out and did a video and I was really in a lot of pain doing that because I was in the middle of my therapy. But uh, it had to be done, you know, business. So. Um, had some fun. Did they ever, uh, did you ever ask if you were, if they were still touring in makeup, if they were going to still do makeup, do you know what your character would be? No, I have no idea. No. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of the uh, Hands on Fire video, did you know that it, it, it's hard to tell the difference in first place between you and Jimmy? You know, you're almost alike in that video. Really? Yeah. Have you heard that before? Is that a video? No, you're the first one. I know I'm taller than Gene, but he looks bigger than anybody. Just in it, too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> yeah. How'd you get into KISS? How'd it start for you? Um, the power to be, I was considered one of the better guitar players in Southern California. And there are certain people who, um, how can I say this? Recommended me from um, guitar companies. I was endorsed by um, Wayne Charvel mm -hmm. and Grover Jackson. Paul was friends with them, and um, they said, "Give me your ten best guitar players." Cause I was a hot guitar back then, about 15 years ago, and uh, I was one of the guys that sent a tape, and they liked it. And um, but I don't really think that's what got me the audition because they went through 200 guitar players. I had a singer in a funk band back in the late, early 70s named Mike Portis. And he was actually um, Paul Stanley's maid, <laughs> Anna. 
and he saw my name on the list, and he told Paul, all those other guys are junk, get this guy, he's better than all of them. And so a little inside helps there, but um, kind of freaked Paul out, I think. And it was really kind of easy doing it. The whole thing about it is, um, how can I say this? I was playing violin concertos at the time, like Paganini, Bettini, and stuff like that. I was, and I had to give all that up and go back to like power chords and stuff, and got arthritis a little bit after that. So it was definitely a culture shock for me. Yeah. I've heard you mention Paul and Gene's uh, names quite a bit, but I'd like to know what's your greatest memory of Eric Carr. Eric. God, God bless his soul. Um, Eric and I got along the best in the band because he is also a new member. And so he's, he felt for me going through it. Because I'm from California, Huntington Beach. And they're from New York for definitely a lot of difference in lifestyle, just slang, just doing things, just like, you know, so square in circles. So um, he helped me out a lot. And, um, he wasn't very happy in the band when I was in the band. Um, he wanted to do more, and they, were, they contained him a lot. He wanted to sing more, he wanted to contribute more. And they were, um, they put a limit on what he was doing. He'd get hurt a lot. And, I felt for him. I remember him the most um, when I think of him using an extra large can of extra super whole hairspray every day to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Uh, how many years ago was On the Animalize album, I had read that Bruce Kulick plays on Lonely is the Hunter. Yeah, he plays on two songs. Um, Why was that? Were you, was your illness at the time? Well, or? no, no. I, um, Gene was doing a movie. And Paul was off at the Bahamas with Lisa Hartman, and um, uh, let's see, um, the record company wanted the album in two weeks, uh, a deadline for weeks, and we weren't done. Gene was in one studio, I think it was um, uh, 54, I think, I'm not sure, and Paul was at right track, and what we were doing, they're sending me back and forth, can I use Mark now? No. Can I like, go and text that back and forth and record? And they needed somebody else to hurry up and get the album done, so Eric, I mean Bruce, um, played on two Gene songs, but I'm just going to some other songs. It was like a deadline, you know, like, it's more like, okay, make or break it, so I didn't mind, man. Yes, sir? In 91, 92, what happened to your deal with Rock Hard Records? Keep I'd like to know that, too. Um, <laughs> so would I. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, where did those guys go, anyway? Um, I never heard from them again. I, they spent a lot of money advertising, promoting that in some magazines, Cashbox and Billboard and all that. And um, I think, you know, talk to talk to the walk the walk type of thing. Yeah, we got sucked up in that. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's not too good of a thing. Get your hopes up, but, you know, I hope they're doing better now. I'm doing better. That's good. Thank you for asking. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Um, what was your favorite guitar book? My name is What's my favorite guitar work on Animalize? God, I haven't heard the album in a long time. Any, anything I play, everything I play. Um, <laughs> geez. Well, let's do it now. <laughs> 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 yes, sir. Uh, another question. Um, I had read that the show or the show and a half that you did perform that yeah. you were pulled aside and kind of chastised by Gene and Paul. Um, well, you had upstage Paul well, on stage. <laughs> yeah. Well, while we were playing in the audience, yeah. Well, I was, you know, I never rehearsed with them for a live show, so it's not like, okay, we do this song next key, we go on it, and you know, you stand here for this song and move here. So I just went out there like being thrown to the lions and. So I just did my schmuck, you know, I started playing with my teeth and behind my back and, you know, going crazy and Gene pulled me to the side and kind of grabbed me kind of hard on the hand and goes, don't you ever do that again in front of me. So it's, I guess he felt like I was showing him everything. So the rest of the show I just stood back with a puppy with tail being between his legs and just played guitar like, you know, <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> How would I ask for fun? Yes, sir. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, you were here, correct? Um, I think he named that after I, I was the original guitar player and I wrote, Peter and I co-wrote the song together and I got, we rehearsed at my house and um, I got the other members and then you went through a couple more transitions of band and he called it that band, yeah. So, like, how did you meet Peter and, like, what's going on? Well, Debbie Cripps is um, Peter's wife, they're going through some problems and, and 
a friend of mine knew Debbie's brother, and um, I guess. Oh, 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 I think I was looking at her picture in Playboy or something, and someone brought up something. And um, we got together, and it took a couple months, and we did it off real good. He, um, Peter's very interesting. He's like, um, we're very outspoken as far as playing with the other two members. Or else, I don't think they could control him, that's why probably he left or something, I don't know. But, um, very good. I think he's from um, Brooklyn, I think, I'm not sure. Mark. Mark, which show and guitars inspired you growing up? Oh, there's hundreds of guitar players. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's like food. Or I like pizza or hamburger to talk with. I mean, there's so many of them. You know, it's like, it's just, I try to listen to two um, guitar players who um, that I wouldn't want to be like and be compared to. I try to listen to other types of music like. Um, as far as instrumentation, like a trumpet or a keyboard or, or a violin or something, take that, how they play their intervals and in music and put it to an influence. But still that style I like, because otherwise it's like, oh, you sound like him, there's already somebody else, so you're second rate and you'll never go anywhere. So my advice is like, don't copy it, you've been hanging all the time, you'll never get nowhere, because there's a thousand of them who never got anywhere. So you've got to be your own, you got to, you know, you've got to make your own little thing so people can identify you from somebody else if they're going, you know, yeah, generic. Yes? Did you have any problems with him before you got into the band? No, not at all. No, no I wasn't trying for him. I was, I got to say, I was playing violin concertos on the guitar. And um, it's very interesting, you know, you get again in the arthritis. There's nothing in the family. And um, just woke up one morning with it. I think it might have been the stress being in the band. Do you think that if, if that didn't happen with your hand? The way, like, Paul, would, would you, have, you think you would have been happy in the band? Or um, not? I signed the four-year contract, so um, there was no escape clause for me, so who knows, you know, maybe they would have fired me, maybe I would have done four years. But. Do you like to do expos and conventions? I love it. Being asked by Tess, who, who gets you to do this? Um, well, really the fans, you know, it's the yeah. fans that do it, yeah. Um, I love it, I mean, without the fans, I'm nothing. I mean, it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be up here, you know. Um, well, my mother and father are from Hartford, Connecticut, and probably from Hartford. Hartford! I'm sure I have a lot of relatives out here, but um, I don't know where they are. <laughs> right now, you guys are my relatives. <laughs> yes, uh, I love your work with White Tiger. When you were in White Tiger? White Tiger, yes. Yeah. Uh, how come that never evolved any further? Um, that was my project, and um, I kind of like took on too big of a load, like producer, engineer, arranger, leader, you know, all that stuff. Own my own record company, production come in, or company, so I had all these things, and everything was going out, nothing coming in. And I kind of like quit my own band because it almost had a nervous breakdown. And we did a, a record and a um, cassette, but never did a CD, but I'm working on remixing the album now. That's great. And come out with a CD, hopefully in the next couple of months. Oh, excellent. And then there's a White Tiger 2 demo that we're going to get some musicians and go over the best songs and hopefully do that too. You did some uh, fabulous guitar work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Um, first, I want to I publicly say thank you for Animal Eyes and thank you for thank being you. part of the, the institution we call this band. I really have two questions. The first one is during the sessions for the album, how long did it take? to record and how much did uh, the Gene and Paul uh, ask you to come up with your own, you know, licks for the solos? Yes, um, the question was about the recording sessions, what did it take to do it? Well, we did the rehearsals and they were kind of like very sketchy outlines of it, right? And um, then we were going to the studio, well Gene went to do his movie, so Paul was left with the production responsibilities. Um, but he wasn't there. He was in um, Palm with Lisa Hartman. Eric was in Florida with some girl. And so it was me and the engineer. The engineer and I, excuse me. Um, we started recording for about a week. And we spent about 10 grand recording. And there are guitars flying everywhere. And Gene and Paul came back. 
and they hated it. They sat me down and said, this doesn't sound like us. And I'm like, I know, it's me. No one else is here playing. So, um, <laughs> it's like, you know, uh, they kind of like had to watch every note I was playing. And to tell you the truth, my best, my very best solo was on the cutting room floor. I mean, they, it's too good. You know, they didn't want, they didn't want, they didn't want it to stick out as much as, well, it stuck out anyway, and what the fuck. But, um, <laughs> they didn't want to stick out too much. So, but they were, um, you know, at one time, well, you know, we liked it, we don't like it. Like, you know, to me, it, it didn't matter if, if I liked it or not, as long as they liked it, I felt like, wow, I can go home tonight, you know. Did they ever, did they like, for instance, like, have it on fire, just thrown up for example, were they ever supportive enough that they would at least say, if something sounds good, they would say, yeah, they would actually tell you that that sounds good. I mean, would they, did they show any, demonstrate any support? Um, no, no, um, they're, I guess they're callous to that, I mean, from all, what they've been through and all the albums they've done, it's just like, it, it's just like, you're doing concrete for another house, it's four it down, it's still a long tour, and it's a long bit. To me, that's what it felt like, you know. You know? But I had a good time. Yeah. Uh, one other quick thing. Have you seen or, or, or spoken or kept in touch with any of them since that time, um, particularly with all that's happening now? You know, I haven't talked to them in, in probably five years, either. Um, Gene sent me an email um, in Brazil a month ago. I don't know, one of my addresses, like, probably wants to sue me or something. I don't really know. <laughs> um, <laughs> their manager called me and I'm going, um, she has my address and number, what, what you, what, what, whatever. Um, Paul, I haven't talked to in a while. Uh, I talked to Brewster, I think, a couple of times. I have, I've never met Ace. I met Vinny once. And, of course, Peter. You know, good old Peter. Um, but no, um, I'm trying to do my thing and they're busy doing their thing, you know. I have a lot of respect for them and pleasant for them and you guys I want to be up here, so. It all goes without saying, you know. Thank you. Like yes. Mark, what's your opinion on Ace and uh, his early work with Kiss? I think he's cool. <laughs> I think he's cool. I mean, <laughs> I liked him the most when I was a kid, but I never had to listen to Kiss. But if I did, I'd look well, that guy's cool. You know, fire out the guitar and like, you know, just the left ball, you know, the Guitar Hero thing. He was cool. I like that. I like to meet him. I like to play with him sometimes. You know, I guess he's a real elusive person. He don't like to. Uh, does he do things like this? Does he come out of the convention? He used to. Oh, he used to. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes, sir. Um, when you were preparing for the Animalized tour, getting ready at some point to play the material live, was there any piece or any material that you found difficult, interesting, or was it boring? Um, like I said, I never had a Kiss album, and I never... Um, I didn't know any of the songs. Um, I never prepared for the tour. Like um, I called up Paul one time. Cause see, I want to go back to California because I was in New York for about I don't know two months. I was homesick. Paul didn't want me to go. Well, he let me go. And I called him about two days later. Um, Paul, I got a problem here. I'm in Beverly Hills Hospital. I got a, something wrong with me. So what's going on here? Um, I was in the hospital and they went on tour with Bruce. And um, they call me from a different country every day. Are you ready to come home? I go, no, no. So it's one of those type of things. Yes. Right, we're going to take two more questions. First two hands. One, two. There it is there. Go ahead. How was the, how was the ending? How did the ending happen? Yeah. Was it in a letter? Was it home? Oh, you mean uh, the, the, the dismissal? <laughs> the, the termination? The firing? Um, oh, where was it? It was in... Um, Indiana, Terry Hope, Fort Wayne. Um, what was the day before the um, Detroit? It was the day before the Detroit show. We we're gonna do the video, and we've been on that. And they decided um, they were gonna go with Bruce because of um, they were used to Bruce and and my arthritic problem. They had to go on. There was mutually no hard feelings. It was more of a, a splitting type thing. And I was really kind of happy because you know I was kind of like going. You know, there's a lot of games you can play if you know these guys. And um, I said to myself, well. Go back to California, you know. Two week seventh day. There it is there. <laughs> Any more questions? One more? Yes, sir. Your new album. What does it sound like? Does it sound like Animal Lives or um, it sounds like me. Right. It's, it's, it's rocking then, right? Um I I play over the top guitar, yeah. I mean, it's just,
I think you'll, I think you'll like it better than the taste test. Do it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Do you ever regret how it turned out? You left so early. You wish we had stayed for like five more years. Oh no! I, I, everything went really good for me because you know I didn't know what was going to happen. The recording album could have been a failure. I could have got all these bad reviews, and it happened to be good. And I left, so it's like I'm very happy. You know, I've heard nothing but good things. You know, and hopefully I'll keep being that way. Yeah. All right, let's give it up for Mark St. John. Thank you guys, thank you very much. All right, thank Mark, you. Mark's going to take about a 15 minute break and then uh, he'll be signing autographs. Uh, where are we going to put Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to line up along the stage here. He's going to sign autographs in that corner of the stage where the table is. Okay. Give him a few minutes. 